Hi, Taurus. Welcome to your January 2018 Astro Update. It's Raina here. So I'm trying out my new Blue Yeti microphone, and we uh, shall see if it works properly. But um, it's only apropos that I should do this for Taurus because Taurus deals with, um, you know, sound and you know, singing the throat, it rules the throat. I have Taurus rising, so it's all good. Now, in January, there's going to be a lot of emphasis on the ninth house for Taurus. And the ninth house is the God house. So anything related to your ethical framework, your philosophical structure in life, what you believe about life. And also, any pursuits that you may have that connect with some sort of uh, spiritual practice, perhaps, or spiritual system of thought. So if you are s studying to be a yoga teacher, for instance, that is indicated. And there's um, a lot of supportive energy for things, for kind of those spiritual endeavors. So the month begins with a super moon in cancer at 11 degrees. And what is so spectacular is that this is a super moon. And because cancer is ruled by the moon, this sort of lunar energy is amplified because uh, whenever you have a heavenly body in the sign that it rules, there is that sense of it being at home and, you know, totally, you know, exemplifying what it, what it stands for. And for you, this is in your third house, which has to do with communications. So uh, it also is an area that has to do with some kind of learning that is for the short term. So if you have gotten any certification uh, that you were undertaking, you might be done with that. And of course it could be in that uh, spiritual area, like maybe Reiki healing or yoga teacher, where it's not a four year degree. It's not something that you have to go uh, to a university for. It just gives you the credentials to make more money on your job, to have more of a, you know, a, a status in your profession. And so that could be ending for you, or you could realize something about your attitude towards education that maybe has held you back. Maybe you have always wanted to pursue higher education, which is in the realm of the opposite house, the ninth house, where uh, a lot of this activity lies. And at the time of that um, supermoon, you kind of realize that there is something to be said for a college degree where before you may have uh, poo-pooed it. And so on the next day of this um, supermoon, on the second of the month, we have Uranus going direct in your 12th house. And the 12th house is really far out. It has to do with your past lives. It has to do with just mysticism in general. And Uranus is all about far out things. So Torians may have already had kind of like these unusual, spontaneous um, spiritual experiences. I would say like Kundalini rising experiences. There's a, there's a book about that. I think I've mentioned that before that's connected to when Uranus is opposing, it's a transit of um, your, your natal Uranus being opposed by the transiting Uranus. I can't remember something like that. And it happens when you're around 42 years old. So if you're a Taurus person in your early forties, this is going to be a natural astrological occurrence apart from this particular transit. But for all Taurians, 
you may find that you have some very une unexplained things that are occurring and they may have been happening for years because Uranus has been in the sector since I believe about 2011. I'm not sure. And what's interesting is that 2018, it will briefly, and maybe it's longer than a month or so. It might be like several months go into your sign. Okay. And then it's going to go back into Aries and in 2019 will permanently go into Taurus and boy, oh boy, Taurus, you're going to have quite a lot of, uh, you know, unusual, um, you know, you might have a, a, a totally different way of expressing yourself when that happens. Let's just put it that way. Now, Mercury is going into Capricorn on the 11th. And what is significant about this is that the 10th marks the date when Mercury goes into the 28th degree of Sagittarius, which was the degree it retrograded in back in early December. So all of this time, which has been five weeks now, uh, we've had to deal with Mercury not quite right. And as I record this, it's late December and there are still hay haywire things happening, happening to me personally and happening to somebody that I know. So um, don't think that you're out of the woods until the 10th of January. But then on the 11th, Mercury goes into Capricorn and there's that ninth house again. So you're thinking about pretty uh, kind of um, expansive ideas. For Taurus, this is very important because Taurus tends to be meat and potatoes and very basic in their outlook on life and their activities. And I don't say that in a bad way. I say that in a very, you know, you're very practical and the ninth house is visionary. So it gives you and injects you with that sense of wonder uh, of possibilities. And that's very important because it's very easy for a tourist person to get into a rut and to even sometimes maybe get cynical when they're looking at their current reality and it's not where they want it to be, but they just can't envision anything happening that is, you know, much more than what they have at the moment. And, and the ninth house is about dreaming big. Until, um, until Mercury goes into this ninth house, it is going to be in the eighth house. And because I see here that Mars is entering the eighth house on January 26th in Sagittarius, there could be some kind of will stuff happening. And with, with Mars going there, there can even be a fight, a conflict, you know, who gets what in the will. Uh, earlier when, you know, for the first 11 days, Mercury in that eighth house is kind of probing the probate and seeing what is, is what, but then uh, some kind of conflict may erupt because perhaps there are things that you see that you don't like. So realize that when Mars goes into this eighth house, you might be arguing about other people's money. And the reason this is important is because as a Taurus money, you take money very seriously. And I could totally see a Taurus person feeling offended that they were possibly being cheated out of money. Please remember that if something is not money that you have earned, it's really not your money. And I, I know that a lot of people are going to be appalled hearing that, but I say that to prevent people from needless stress in their lives and just un, unpleasant, ugly scenes and things, because you don't want to be the person fighting over money. 
Now, sometimes it's kind of a spiritual lesson for the other people who are not doing the right thing. So I'm not going to make blanket statements about that, but just to kind of uh, give a different perspective. Mercury will eventually go into the, your 10th house on the 31st, the last day of the month. This happens to be the same day that there is a blue moon lunar eclipse in Leo. Again, at 11 degrees, just like that Cancer supermoon. And this is also a supermoon from what I understand in Leo. Leo is your fourth house of home and family. Back in the summer, you had a total solar eclipse. This is a total lunar eclipse, but you had a total solar eclipse in this fourth house of home and family. Now, from what I've read, if you don't have any planets in a particular house, it may not transpire in a very obvious way where there is, there seems to be developments in the area. However, if there are multiple eclipses in one house, I think the odds are that something is eventually going to manifest. And in this case, we're talking about endings. And you may have already decided that you are done living where you're living, but it doesn't mean that you're going to be packing your bags on the 31st. It just may be the final indication that you need to go. Again, don't be stuck on the date of the 31st because it may manifest a little bit earlier or months later. It just is the theme to get you into that mode of starting to wrap up things instead of uh, maybe stay longer than you should be staying in a certain place. And with the fourth house, this could even be a place that you associate with your, with your um, hometown. Uh, so maybe you've lived in the same area your whole life and you have, you feel that you have to live somewhere else. And yet it's so hard as a tourist person to move on and to make that final break, you know, but you are assisted now because every time there's a full moon and a lunar eclipse is a full moon that is happens to be very powerful. There's an opposition from the sun, the sun in, in Aquarius is great for, you know, making break clean breaks with things that you, that no longer serve you. Great for breaking habits. And it could be that the place where you live is a, is a habit. New moon, did I mention the new moon in Capricorn on the 16th at 26 degrees of Capricorn? Again, in that ninth house of foreign travel, hopefully I mentioned foreign travel too. So you may be embarking on a whole new, not only leaving your hometown, but maybe you're going to move overseas even. And that can be kind of daunting for Taurus because you love the familiar, but maybe you're just really ready and you're pumped. The very next day, Venus goes into Aquarius, which is your 10th house of career. So that can make you very um, attractive to potential employers or to your current employer. You may get a bonus or a raise because Venus can bring money to whatever house that she travels into. And you can receive favor from higher ups who view you in a very attractive light. Now, before the 17th, which is half of the month, Venus is in that sector of foreign travel. And that could bring money that allows you to travel. Where does the money come from? It's none of your business. Um, you know, that's just something that they say when people want to manifest something, but they get hung up on how are they going to make the money? They say that we should say to ourselves, it's none of my business how the universe conspires on my behalf. All I have to know is that the universe does conspire. The money could also be in order to go to college if that's been a dream of yours. Maybe you get money for a book that you've published. 
So I'm going to leave it there because I've already talked about Mars and Sagittarius and the, and the lunar eclipse in your fourth house, Taurus. So I hope you enjoy this. And if you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. I have a variety of readings, including a natal chart interpretation, which is kind of like this reading. But otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful January. Take care. Bye.